Welcome to this health supplier segment here on Health Professional Radio. I thank you for joining us today. Our guest is Mr. Kevin Brothen, VP of Marketing, Bracing and Support at DJO Global. And he's joining us on the program today to talk about the Don Joy X4. It's a smart brace that's revolutionizing recovery in orthopedic surgery. Welcome to the program. How are you today? I'm good, Neil. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. What is your role there other than VP of Marketing at DJO? Have you um, always been involved in orthopedic devices? I've been in uh, orthopedics in sales and marketing roles for over 20 years. Okay. okay. And uh, I've been I've been on board here at DJO about seven months. So this new smart brace, it was introduced at the American Association of Orthopedic Surgeons. Uh, what is this new device and how is it different from anything similar or is it totally different from anything at all? You're exactly right. So we, we launched the product at the uh, AAOS, American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, in early March. And the product will be released into the field on April 17th. It's a brace that's used in post-operative total knee replacement surgery. So the, uh, the brace is used for uh, not only stability, but it has a sensor built into the brace <laughs> that would connect with the patient's smartphone that would then uh, connect to the cloud and the clinician would, the surgeon or the, or the, or the clinic, the uh, office, would be able to monitor the patient's progress and to see how, uh, how the patient's doing postoperatively. How many replacements are we talking about a year? Is this something that, were we just dropping the ball before this device as far as tracking progress post-op? No, I wouldn't say that anybody's been dropping the ball. Um, our company's been embracing for a very long time and helping people move, helping people to be able to perform. And I, I, initially, about two years ago, the idea was brought to us that we should be we should look at a smart brace for ACLs. And so to answer your question, just to, to give you kind of a perspective, ACL surgery, there's about 265,000 performed last year. And on the for total knees, there were over 700,000, and that number is growing uh, and projected to quadruple by the year 2030. So you're talking about, you know, close to close to two or three million, you know, procedures done, uh, you know, close to a year. So, uh, uh, so it's a growing area, and and there's a need for this type of, of technology because of the fact that you've got, you know, you've got outpatient, which patients at total knee they used to stay for three days postoperatively, then it's gone to two days, and in some cases now it's gone to one day and even same day. Hmm. So the need to be able to monitor the progress, mitigate any risk and make sure that the patient's doing well, but also helping the patient stay connected to the surgeon and the, and the office and the clinic and the clinician staying close to the patient. Um, again, to mitigate risk, uh, to give them a sense of, of uh, you know, uh, confidence, and also to allow for, uh, for the patient to know that they're, they are getting better. And, and ultimately, the end goal is to improve outcomes in, an ever, in, a, in a hugely increasing procedure. Not being knowledgeable about braces, from what I've seen, they look to be cold and hard and, and possibly uncomfortable. When they're in place and your patient is, you know, moving and, and twisting and, and trying to get better, how is this brace different from from any of the braces that you may have been involved in, in developing that is now going to be released? Yeah, as I mentioned, DJO, we've been doing braces for a long time, and we're entering into a space that that doesn't currently exist. We're almost creating this space. And because we're dealing with an older population, we're dealing with, you know, varying different sizes of, of, of people. You've got the smaller, uh, you know, older folk, and then you've got some, you know, you've got some small bone, larger, more adipose tissue, larger thighs. And, it need, and when we built this brace, we knew in order to have patient compliance, we were absolutely going to have to build a brace that was comfortable to wear. That, had, that the patient wouldn't mind wearing. So in, and they'd be able to do their exercises while wearing the brace, while walking every day. Mm-hmm. And, and it actually walks the patient through um, you know, uh, exercise protocols uh, for, like for physical therapy. <laughs> um, so they have to be able to wear those braces when they're doing that, but they also have to be able to wear that brace all day, every day, except for when they're sleeping or extended periods of rest or bathing or showering. So it has to be comfortable. Well, let's talk about how smart this device actually is. Let's discuss some of the features that allow it to uh, be so accessible by the physician and the patient as well. Okay, so yeah, so we built, what we did is we built in a post-operative protocol uh, for 
exercise therapy so that the patient would be able to use this as an adjunct to the physical therapy treatments that they might already see. Mm -hmm. Um, They could also wear the brace while they're with their physical therapist and would monitor that motion as well. But what we also did is we allowed for some of the common calls that, that surgeons would get or their offices would get would be questions about their incision or questions about how much pain they were having. And so what we did what we did is we built in an opportunity for the patient to take a, a photo of the affected knee alongside the unaffected knee, upload that into the system. And then we've also we also included the ability for the for patient feedback. So the patient could ask questions to the clinician mm-hmm. and the clinician would be able to respond. Um, in a lot of cases, in most cases, they, they'll respond and say, your incision looks normal at two weeks or three weeks. And they would wear that brace for those four weeks until they went back for their, uh, for their next visit with their surgeon. But the other thing that we did is we, we have the ability to count the number of steps or the amount of activity that that patient is uh, participating in. And the reason that's really important is there really isn't post-operative protocols for how much a patient should be walking uh, based on their age, based on their weight, based on the procedure. Uh, and so we feel like this is really valuable information to be able to see how much a patient is walking, how much activity they're doing. And then and, and from that information, which the company wouldn't hold, but it would be held within the, within the network of the hospital. Mm-hmm. And it would, it, would all be, it would all be held there, HIPAA compliant, and that information would help develop post-operative protocols, that, again, because the end result is for improved outcomes. Does it matter the cause of the, uh, of the replacement? No, I mean, it, 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 it wouldn't matter whether, whether they're having their knee replaced because they're injured, because of osteoarthritis. Um, it, it really wouldn't matter at all. In fact, in fact, what we feel like um, is that this type of a brace could be used for other injuries as well. We've 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 marketed it and, and really targeted it for post-operative total knee replacements uh, or for total knee replacement procedures. But we do feel like it can be used in others as well. So it wouldn't matter whether you had your knee replaced for you know for injury or because it was just you know wearing out as as many of our knees do as we get older. But um, but it also, like I said, it, it also allows to be able to mitigate any risk during during the uh, during those first three four weeks until they see their see their surgeon again. And the, the surgeon is able to see a dashboard and see how their patients are doing. So there's a green, a yellow, and a red. Green, obviously, those. The, the patients that are in the green are doing well. They're progressing. Mm-hmm. The patients in the yellow uh, maybe aren't. We're not seeing improvement, and maybe the office can call to mitigate any risk. And then if they're in the red, maybe they're not wearing their brace. Maybe they're unengaged. Maybe they're having too much pain. Maybe there's a problem that, again, the, the surgeon can call. The office can call and say, hey, I want you to come back in, and we'll take a look at it and make sure that things are going well. Because, again, at the end of the day, you've got, you've got you know, three or four weeks, whatever the p- protocol for that surgeon is, is to be able to mitigate risk and make sure that they're improving. Otherwise, at the four-week mark, for instance, and they come back in, it may be too late they may have missed an opportunity to really get a better outcome with that total knee. Now, we'd like to learn some more about uh, DJO Global and about the X4 Smart Brace as well. Where can we go online and get that information? So you can go on www.djoglobal.com, our website, look for the X4 Smart Brace, and you will find also more information about our motion intelligence platform uh, on the website. Great. Thank you for joining us today, Kevin Brothen, VP Marketing, Bracing and Support at DJO Global. Thanks for having me, Neil. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, for this Health Supplier segment. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at hpr.fm, healthprofessionalradio.com.au, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and on SoundCloud as well.